Welcome to this month's edition of Inside COD. We wrap up this school year with B. Bishop, Editor-in-Chief for The Courier Newspaper, and hear what is going on at COD for the end of the semester. The Vietnam Travel Memorial is coming to Glen Ellen. Find out when and where you can view it. The Lakeside Pavilion is open and hosting many events. Learn more about this new area. All that and much more coming up right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of Inside COD. I'm your host, Bianca Yeager. And I'm Hannah Smith. As we close out the spring semester, there's a great deal happening on campus. Here with us to discuss it all is B. Bishop, Editor-in-Chief at The Courier. Hello and thanks for joining us, B. Hi, thank you for having me back here. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. Yeah. So currently there seems to be a little bit of turmoil with the COD baseball team. Yep. Um, of course, they've had a bit of a losing streak lately. However, um, the bigger news is that we learned a little something about the head coach. Can you tell us a little something about that? Yeah, so um, the head coach, baseball head coach, Bobby Wilson, um, announced on his public X, formerly known as Twitter, whichever you prefer, um, that he had been fired from the position of head coach. Um, and us over at The Courier had sort of seen some of our sports writers have sort of seen that he wasn't at um, most of the games since you know they got back from the baseball team had gotten back from their trip to Myrtle Beach Florida um, and then sort of rumors started coming around um, people were sort of saying off the record that he had been suspended um, over at the courier we got in touch with you know the athletic department and the administration to see if someone could give us some answers um, and we got a response from the marketing team Jen Duda I believe she's mm -hmm. like senior, senior manager over there um, and all that she had said was while Bobby Wilson is gone assistant coach um, Matt Gould would be taking over operations and that was on April 17th um, and then about you know five days later Bobby Wilson is announcing that he has been fired um, we had reached out to Wilson further up to the point just to see if he had any other statements um, he had not said anything, and as of right now, there's still no formal um, announcement from either the athletic department or from COD about his firing. Um, we also have no news of who would take over as head coach. Um, we're also not really sure what happened that led up to his suspension and then firing. Um, what we do know is that there were also two assistant coaches who were not there during some of the games, um, and we have not received any information about those as well. So, as of right now, Bobby Wilson is no longer head coach, and we do not know a lot more than that. Okay. All right. Well, the Student Leadership Council has elected new representatives. Will this change affect the college's decision-making process, process, and what can you tell us about the new candidates? Yeah, so I don't really foresee this having any effect on decision-making processes. Um, this is something that happens every year, so um, Student Leadership Council is typically well-prepared to sort of handle that in stride. Um, some of the newer things is we got a new student trustee. Um, our new student trustee is uh, Anum Satana. She just started um, with the Board of Trustees at their last meeting on April 25th. She got sworn in, so she is officially the new student trustee, um, and she will be until um, the April board meeting next semester. So the Student Leadership Council is focusing on a few major things. Um, they're looking for um, accessibility and ease for transferring for transfer students. Um, they're looking to bolster open education resources, um, which is sort of cost efficient and, you know, hopefully, you know, not having to pay for textbooks, which a lot of students would really enjoy. Um, so, yeah, they're really focused on sort of helping, you know, students with cost of college as well as um, building up clubs and, you know, things like that to sort of help generate the COD community here at COD, so, yeah. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a lot, really, yeah. seriously. <laughs> and, and in addition to that, uh, the Board of Trustees has recently approved a couple of new certificates here at the university. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so the Board of Trustees um, just approved two new certificates. That would be the Digital Photography Certificate um, and the Media Literacy Journalism and Production Certificate. 
Um, the photography certificate, it is 15 credits um, with four required courses and then one like specialized course. Um, and the media, media literacy one is 21 credits with nine cr uh, elective choice cr credits um, and four required ones, which uh, include intro to mass communication, um, news reporting, reporting on social media, um, and a misinformation class to sort of go over things like that. Um, so yeah, something a lot lighter than a actual degree, but definitely something that can help students get a lot of, you know, hands-on practice and, you know, some sort of credibility from COD. So. Yeah. yeah, that sounds really great. And the Board of Trustees is still in search of a replacement for, the, for President Caputo. What updates can you give us? for this? Yeah, so as of right now, there's been no formal announcement of who the next interim president will be and definitely not for who the new official president will be. Um, at the recent board meeting, um, board chair Christine Fenney um, in her report talked about how May 4th, it, there are starting interview process for things like that for the new interim president. Um, they will also be looking for an external candidate, so not someone who works at COD. Um, so hopefully we will have an update by the May board meeting, which is on May 16th. Um, but we shall see. We'll, we'll see when that happens. Um, I believe Caputo is scheduled to leave at sometime in June. So mm -hmm. tight turnaround. I'm sure once we get the interim president, there'll be more updates on to the official position. Sure, of course. You know. <laughs> Waiting on bated breath, are we not? Yes, we are. <laughs> There's one issue that is very close to the hearts of all students that are, are uh, taking classes here at CEDU, and that's the, the announcement of a tuition increase. Yes. What can you tell us about that? Yes, so starting in fall 2024, tuition will be going up $8 per credit hour. Um, so for in-state tuition, or in-district tuition, um, that'll be going up from $144 per credit hour to $152 per credit hour. Um, and it's the same increment for um, out of district and then out of state international. Um, this is the third year in a row that the board has voted to increase tuition. Um, it was a $2 increase and a $4 increase, um, and now obviously the $8 increase. Um, there was talk about it being originally a $5 increase, but the board voted to sort of increase that um, to the $8 that we see now. Um, Despite that, COD still has among some of the lowest tuition cost in Illinois. Um, so even though we are seeing this increase, you know, people who come to COD are still paying on average less than people in other parts of the state. Um, and you know, as I said, Student Leadership Council is really looking to sort of build open education resources and the library has a lot of great resources. Um, so students who are concerned about any financial hit can definitely talk to um, you know, financial aid to see if they can get any. Um, the library, I know, offers laptops and, you know, hotspots for people who are concerned about that. So there are definitely other resources for students on campus to sort of help cut that cost. As always, B, you've provided us with much insight into things happening on campus. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. For more information about the college and events here on campus, visit cod.edu. And coming up next, we hear about the upcoming Vietnam Traveling Memorial. But first, here is a look at your COD calendar of events. The COD Fashion Department will be hosting its annual fashion show on May 11th at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Come see a variety of new designs from the COD Fashion Design students. At the Homeland Security Training Center, Street Scene, the Buffalo Theater Ensemble presents Into the Earth with You. Granddad is gone, no elegies, no dirges, no dowries. It all goes in the grave. But three sisters can't forget what's buried when an impossible discovery appends their notions of loss and gets the women asking who among us has been digging. Come see the show May 2nd through June 2nd at 8 p.m. Thursday through Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. Tickets are $44 for adults and $42 for seniors. The COD Music Faculty created Music Fridays at noon to showcase student, faculty, alumni, and guest artists in a free accessible, accessible daytime series of music performances and related events. 
The series is open to the entire COD community as a place where a broad spectrum of music is on display. Concerts are approximately one hour in length. All events are free and begin at 12 p.m. in Mac Room 140, unless otherwise noted. For more information, contact Matt Shevitz at shevitzm at cod.edu. As we approach Memorial Day, the College of DuPage, in partnership with the Glen Ellen American Legion Post Number 3 and the Village of Glen Ellen, will be hosting the Vietnam Traveling Memorial Wall. Joining us today to discuss this is Sherry Gross, Manager of Veteran Services here at College of DuPage. Welcome, Sherry, and thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Before we discuss the wall, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about what you do in, in, in Veterans Affairs or Veteran Services? Sure, so we are a small team of six, but we are mighty. We serve over a thousand military connected students any given term, and we primarily help them with their military education benefits that they've earned through their service, but we also resource out to the community for needs like housing, childcare, medical care, VA registration, that sort of thing. Wonderful. That's great. The Vietnam Travel, Traveling Memorial is special to many people. How did the collaboration come together to display the wall in Glen Ellen? So I think the um, American Legion was approached to have it here in DuPage County, and what better place than COD? We have the space, we have the parking, we have the commitment to serving our military students. Dr. Puto himself is a veteran. Um, so it just made sense to have it here on campus. Yeah, That's great, and I agree that it's a great place to have it. Um, there are other exhibits that will be showcased uh, when the wall comes to campus. Um, what, what can people who are coming to see it kind of expect? Sure, so the wall itself is about six feet high and 300 feet long. So it's really big and will take up an entire parking lot. But we will also have the Wall of Honor here, which honors service members from Operation Desert Shield forward, including those that were lost in the attacks on 9-11, as well as artwork of the Vietnam Women's Memorial that's in Washington, D.C. That's fantastic. Wow. And when and where will our viewers be able to visit the Vietnam Memorial? So it is here from May 29th to June 2nd. So the Wednesday that it opens, you can't get in until 2 p.m. and it's open till 8. And then every other day that it's here, Thursday through Saturday, people can view it from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., I believe. And it'll be here on campus in one of the Fowell lots. That's all so amazing. And I'm very excited that the wall is gonna be here. And I know so many people, so many veterans especially really are as well. Well, thank you so much, Sherry, for taking the time to explain this all to us. Really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And remember, for more information on the Vietnam Traveling Memorial, visit cod.edu backslash Vietnam dash memorial. And coming up next, we hear about the Lakeside Pavilion. But first, here's a look at your community calendar of events. The Great Midwest Train Show is coming to the DuPage County Fairgrounds on May 5th from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. See over 500 tables of new and used model trains, accessories, parts, and more for sale, as well as free giveaways to attendees and a DCC train layout for kids to operate. The DuPage County Fairgrounds is hosting a flower and plant sale May 17th through May 19th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Huge assortment of types and colors, all proceeds from the sale are used to raise funds to help improve the fairgrounds. Enjoy the wonders of the forest preserves and get some healthy exercise on a guided, quick paced three to five mile hike. Ages 18 and up, $5 per person. Register online or at 630-933-7248 at the Meacham Grove Forest Preserve. Looking for some outside entertainment this summer? Then the Mackinich Art Center here at COD has you covered. Joining us today is Diana Martinez, director of the MAC. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, thanks for having me. Of course, what can you tell us about the upcoming summer entertainment? Well, we have a big Lakeside series plan this summer, pending cicadas, right? Because I don't know what's gonna happen, so we're planning to be outside, but the good news is if, it, if it's bad, we're gonna just move right inside. Um, but what we have planned, we have on Thursday nights, WDCB does jazz nights outside and people love, you know, people who love jazz and WDCB fans love those nights. And we have the Del Von Lamar organ trio one night and that's an organ trio. And then the second Thursday night, Joey Alexander, who is um, like a prodigy pianist 
and he's an amazing improvisational jazz pianist. So that's on Thursday nights. And then starting, so this all starts on uh, July 18th for that, Thursdays. And then on Friday nights is when the Lakeside series starts. And that's on July 12th, so it's the Friday after the 4th of July we begin. And we kick it off with New Philharmonic Orchestra, which is always a gorgeous night under the stars. And then we have a new act called Brit Pack, and they are a British invasion group. So it's everything from obviously the Beatles to the Rolling Stones, even Queen. It's a very fun young group, so I think that'll be really fun. And then another new act, um, and I have to say this is one of my favorites, and it's Uptown Soul. And they are uh, like Motown meets 2024 because they play and sing some of the Motown songs, but they've notched it up a level. So it's got a little more hip hop feel and the dancing is off the chart. And those guys are just tremendous. So I'm really excited about that night. And then we close out the season with Elton Ron, not to be confused with Elton John, but hopefully you will confuse him with Elton John because he's an Elton John impersonator and it'll be all of Elton John's hits. So I think it's gonna be a great summer. That sounds absolutely fabulous. Um, so the, the Lakeside Pavilion is a really popular place mm. for so many people. What makes it so special? You know, honestly, I think it's the people and the community and the sense of community because um, you, it, it's really the, the audience is based of people all over DuPage County. And you might be sitting next to your neighbor, but you might be sitting next to somebody you don't know, but usually everybody's kind of from this area. And it's a really nice crowd. Um, I think the other thing is we have a really wonderful service with bars and we have great food vendors that come out and join us each summer that are a little bit a step above like the carnival thing, right? You know, we have really great gourmet burgers. Um, sometimes there's tacos, but it's really good food vendors. And I think the real attraction to the whole thing is much like more, more often when you go to an outside show, right, in a, in a, in a city, you have, you know, just sound that are stacked up and it's a quick, it's not a huge budget. We have an incredible tech team who puts on a show that's as acoustically perfect as it would be inside, outside, with full lighting. So it's a real concert experience. And I think the other thing that people love is it's free, right? It's free. And if you want to bring a picnic, you can bring a picnic. You cannot bring alcohol, but you can bring your own picnic. Um, and, and I think it's a sense of community that, that makes people just really enjoy it so much. That's so awesome. And if someone has never been to a Lakeside Pavilion event, what do they need to know before they arrive? Um, so you, you bring your own blanket or chairs if you want um, and to sit on the lawn and that your bags will be checked. And we do that for the security and safety of everyone. Um, you know the world's become a crazy place and I want everybody to feel completely safe and comfortable. You cannot bring alcohol or strollers or carts or tables, but you can bring a chair and your blanket to sit on and you can bring your snacks and you know bring your family and have a great time. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. Um, now, are there any events that you can tell us about that are happening inside the MAC this yes. summer? So College Theater is doing Bippity Boppity Boo, an improv show that will be here for a weekend. And College Theater is also doing the Mystery of Edrin Drood. Um, and that is, uh, a, it, it's a musical. And it was uh, a mystery that Charles Dickens never finished. And so he died before he finished it. So the musical version of it is they go up to a certain point and then they have six different endings, I think, that the audience can choose how does the play end. And then they, they do it however the audience votes that night. Also, we have um, on campus Olmec Trails. And that's a really neat, interesting art project that's going to be outside and inside. And these are reproductions of huge, gigantic Olmec statues that were found in um, Mexico. They're from around the time that King Tut was alive. These are recreations 
and they are all being painted and interpreted by Latin American artists all over the United States, Canada, and Mexico. We'll have 10 of them here on campus. And you can tour and get a little tour in the MAC and get some education on it. And then you can go out in the prairies and look at them. Thanks so much, Diana, for joining us today and telling us about the MAC's upcoming events. Thanks for having me. Of course. And remember, for more information and show times, visit at themac.org or call 630-942-4000. Thanks again for joining us on this month's edition of Inside COD. Remember to visit our Facebook page and Instagram page at Courier TV. We will see you back here in the fall.